Aloha. Welcome to the Mr. G podcast. This is episode number 36. I got crazy migrants yelling outside my bedroom window, shaking their kids like, scream, baby, scream. But we're still here. It's June 21st, 2023. Uh, Aloha from the outskirts of Chinatown and Honolulu, Hawaii, the largest city in the Pacific. Yesterday's episode, episode 35, was my favorite episode. I've been doing this every day, a new episode every day. Yesterday was was all about Berkeley, California. But what made yesterday's episode so good was I told a lot of personal stories that I did not plan on telling. But as I was talking about Berkeley, California, a few different stories came up and I I clipped them, put them on TikTok. They were pretty enjoyable. People laughed. They're funny. And I think that's what's uh, been the best about this podcast so far after a month of doing it every day is it's really good, well-produced you're not going to get any dead air. I realized most people that do podcasts, they have guests on every day or they have another person there every day because they're not able to do like this. They're not able to talk like 20, 30 minutes straight, especially if people are just listening to the podcast. I'm doing this, like I said, from the outskirts of Chinatown in my one bedroom apartment. I live in a ghetto building with 15 one bedroom apartments. It's not so bad, the actual apartment. It's just there's a few neighbors around here that think that I come with the apartment. So they're just like obsessed with me every day, yelling outside my bedroom, singing outside my bedroom. Yesterday's episode was all about Berkeley, University of California, Berkeley, and how it's the top university in the United States. Um, I graduated from the University of Texas, Hook'em Horns, both University of Texas in Austin and University of California, Berkeley um, are both considered public Ivy League schools. Imagine that. This is going down in history. This is episode 36. Imagine that. I have neighbors outside that I've never spoken to that I have nothing to do with that live like two floors down. They're standing outside of my w- apartment with my windows closed, yelling like, shut up. We don't know. Like, what the fuck? Like, pfft. I've had a dozen different apartments. I've never had to deal with this. It's like, I'm not part of your life. Go inside, lady. Like, leave me the fuck alone. Like, I'm not Elvis. And this isn't an Elvis fucking autograph signing. Like, what the hell? I'm allowed to talk in my own apartment with my windows and doors shut. They're literally standing outside like, we do not like you. Shut up. Shut up. We do not like the words. We like baby cry. Baby cry sound good. Like, that's basically what's going on. I'm like, leave me the fuck alone. This has gotten to the point where, like, police have suggested that I get restraining over of, of over particular people in these apartments. Because it's like, whoa, this is not a fucking co-op. It's not a farm. We're not all living together. Leave me the fuck alone, you know? All right. Back to Berkeley. Fun facts about... I do this 20 minutes a day. They're not even doing this the other time. Only when they know that I'm recording. You know, you ma- you wonder why it's hard for me to sleep. Like, goddamn, how how am I? Like, they're fucking literally like outside my window, fucking twenty four seven. Like, I'm like the most interesting thing that they've ever seen. They were obviously raised on American television and somewhere other than the United States, and they think that that's completely normal that they're in like a sitcom with me and like that. This is like interaction is like like. It's just so absurd. It's just like, leave me the fuck alone. All right, fun facts about Berkeley. Berkeley at a glance. A quick look at Berkeley shows the University of California Berkeley's true value to the people. All right, just a side note before we start. I'm not stopping doing this regardless, regardless of how many people listen to this podcast, the Mr. G podcast, regardless of how many people download it, regardless of how many people watch it on YouTube or on Twitter. I'm doing it every day. You are not keeping me out of the podcast club. No matter what happens in my life, this mic and this podcast is happening every day. And there's not going to be, it's going to be pretty hard to shut me the fuck up. You need a little bit more than fucking some migrants outside yelling outside my window. And so hopefully I wanted to deal with that. And we would have already started about fun fucking facts about Berkeley. But hey, here we are. Okay. And, And since, you know, the personal antidote to these podcasts is also what people enjoy all right but hey who who, what worst person to fucking stalk and just piss off somebody like me that has an audience that's gonna fucking make you look stupid or what why not just leave me the fuck alone you know like stop acting like like that i have something to do with you all right the university of california berkeley also known simply as cal about 95% of Berkeley's incoming first-year students opt for in-college, on-campus housing. 
Uh, that's similar to the University of Texas. The majority of freshmen, uh, they choose for on-campus housing. And I suppose that's a good idea. Um, when I was, I, I, I started school at the University of Texas when I was 26, uh, turning 27. I didn't start college till 23. So I was a lot older than everybody else. I had already done my prerequisites, so I wasn't considered a freshman when I started at the University of Texas. But uh, even at 18 years old, I had been living on my own since I was like 15 or 16. I had my own apartment at 16 years old. That's why I see some people, some of the kids living here when they're in their 20s, like still sharing a one bedroom apartment with their dad, their mom, their uh, aunt. It's And then they're so they got such attitude and talk shit to me like they're staring me down. It's like, I don't know you, kid. Like you, you're you need to take a look in the mirror, bro. You look bad. When I was 19, I was embarrassed hanging out of my mom's house house. And I, I didn't really live there. I just hung out there and so occasionally stayed there. But they're over here. That kid's over here every single day. As soon as his parents go to work, it's just like the people in this building have taken one bedroom apartments to heights I've never seen, you know, like using the water hose every day, just hanging out in the parking lot, just being interested in all of your neighbors. Like, oh, like literally, like there's been times where I was walking when I first moved in and they stopped me like, hey, where are you going? And I'm like, what? Like, where am I going? Like, who are you? Like, oh, we live here. It's a, it's a building. We're all together. Like, where am I going? You know? <laughs> all right. So it, it is what it is. I'm not stopping this podcast. And today we're going to talk about the University of California, Berkeley. Uh, the athletic teams that represent the University of California, Berkeley are in the Pac-12 conference. And they're famous for their longstanding rivalry with Stanford, also a Bay Area team. Uh, Earl Warren, a famous chief justice of the United S courts is a famous graduate, uh, chief, ju chief justice of the Supreme court. Her kids are literally yelling outside just during my podcast here. All right. So you see Berkeley in numbers. It's located in the middle of the city. It has a total undergraduate enrollment of 32,000 university of Texas has about 50,000. Its campus spans about 1,200 acres. It has one of the nicest campuses. Uh, one fun fact about Berkeley is their University Botanical Gardens, which has uh, 10,000 different kinds of plants. Uh, Berkeley is home to 14 different schools and colleges. Uh, at the University of California, the, the student to faculty ratio is 20 to one. Uh, that's one of the best in the country, especially for a premier university uh, like Berkeley, like University of California, Berkeley. Most of their classes have fewer than 20 students. Uh, the city of Berkeley, uh, it's across the bay from San Francisco, and it was a small uh, town, apparently, before 1906, during the great San Francisco earthquake, many residents relocated across the bay uh, because they feared that there would be another aftershock. And so they never returned and they just, uh, there was a rapid increase in the city's population at that time. Um, but the, yeah, the Berkeley city, it's right on the same side of Oakland. So you could walk to Oakland from Berkeley. Uh, Berkeley is, well, I guess you would say a liberal city, uh, but it, it, it's a great city as well. Uh, but one liberal aspect is they have uh, like sister cities. A lot of cities like Austin, the Texas would do that uh, where they have, um, you know, different cities in other countries where they share um, e economic and social ties and trade. Uh, and it, it's basically just a name. And uh, they have 17 sister cities, which was one of the highest in the United States. Mm -hmm. So uh, Berkeley has always been known to recognize the value of public discourse. Um, it's was the one of the first places to have uh, peaceful sit in demonstra demonstrations during the free speech movement in the 1960s, as well as the civil rights movement and the anti Vietnam movement. Uh, both of them, uh, both of those protest movements uh, took root in Berkeley. Um, I, I mentioned in yesterday's podcast, uh, it's there's a place in Berkeley that's similar to uh Hyde Park where uh, in England where people just stand and tell their viewpoints and uh, talking points and they stand on their soapbox literally I believe that's where the term soapbox comes from is the people that would stand in Hyde Park 
And I think it's called Sproul Plaza off the top of my head. And it's the entrance to Berkeley, uh, one of the uh, most recognizable landmarks on the, on the Berkeley campus is the entrance where uh, the Sproul Plaza, where people speak and say poetry sometimes or political ideas or religious ideas. And they have these large gates that have been there since in its inception, I imagine, or as long as the oldest pictures that I've seen have seen these gates. And it's right at the intersection where Telegraph Avenue actually dead ends into the University of California. Telegraph Avenue is the main uh, street in front of Berkeley where you'll find the Mediterranean Coffee Shop, one of the uh, longest running coffee shops in the United States where Jack Kerouac, Allen Ginsberg, uh, William Burroughs used to hang out. At, I believe part of the famous poem Howl was written in that coffee shop. And right across the street, I believe it's Moe's Books. It's one of the oldest bookstores in the United States. Uh, there's a really cheap Chinese restaurant right around the corner that I would eat at almost every day, too. Uh, some great Chinese food in Berkeley. But uh, notable Berkeley students. We'll try to get through as many as I can here. Um, it's the first day of summer. I hope everybody is enjoying themselves. That was a pretty strange way to start the podcast here. I tried to make a uh, notion not to talk about the neighbors on this podcast, not to mention them, and uh, just keep it uh, to what I want to talk about here. Keep it to the topic. And because it seems like, and, and that's different from my daily monologues, which I did in 2021 and 2022, if you don't watch on TikTok, uh, where I would write out a daily monologue and read it every day. And a lot of those those times, and I still write an essay every day. But almost every day, but I would mention uh, my neighbors and talk about more personal issues. But these podcasts, they seem uh, more. Um, uh, what's the word? More evergreen, uh, where like you could listen to it a month from now or a year from now or two years from now, where you're not really going to be listening to what was going on in my life. Uh, you know, six months from ago or a year ago, even I'm not interested in that. Well, I'm definitely not interested in that. Most people wouldn't be interested in that. Most people, I see you, I see you, Jay, I see you. But uh, some people might be interested in that. But these podcasts are a little bit different where they're, like I said, they're more evergreen, where I feel that you could listen to them for a, a couple of years from now or a few years from now. And I try to keep them that way. And using the professional mic does make a big difference not just in the production value, but also in what I bring to the table. So I'm more likely uh, to not talk about uh, frivolous shit like uh, beef with my neighbors or anything uh, and talk about more serious things because it seems more important. So quickly, we're going to go through some of the top graduates from the University of Berkeley. Uh, on this top 100 le list by Ed, Ed, Edu... Um, by Edu UK, all right, Hershey's, u24gov.ua, all right, so uh, number 100, we have David Horowitz, uh, he's a political American conservative, president of the right-wing Freedom Center, what a way to start, oh, you're a crazy, crazy Trump conspiracy, but no, he went to Berkeley, uh, Berkeley, what we found out yesterday, they have a really strong ROTC program, one of the best in the United States, now, we're not going to go through all 100. Number 99, Douglas Engelbert, graduated in 1955 with a doctorate and 52 with a bachelor's degree. So he went to there in the 30s and 40s. He was an American engineer and inventor. Another old timer, number 98, Rube Goldberg. He studied at Berkeley all the way in 1904. He is known for being a cartoonist, a sculptor, an author, an engineer, and an inventor. Uh, like I said, there's some people I'm going to leave out just for the hell of it. I hope they're not upset. Michael Savage, number 95, another right wing American author, uh, conspiracy theorist, political commentator and former radio host. Michael Savage, Berkeley graduate. All right. Stephen Jenkins, a little lighter here. So we got so far we have two Berkeley graduates. They're both right wing conservative radio hosts. Stephen Jenkins, lead singer of Third Eye Blind. Uh, American guitarist and frontman of the alternative group Third Eye Blind. He began his career in 1992 as a short-lived rap duo, Punk and Natty. Uh, you know, Third Eye Blind, if you were alive in the 90s, I wish you would step back from that ledge, my friend. 
We cut ties all the time to do been living in. Or uh uh do 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 I'm out of game. Do 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 I said my charm kind of live. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> all right, he had a couple really good songs that I like. Okay. Don't fucking judge me. All right. Number 91, Peter Schiff. You'll know him if you have you been on this website called YouTube. Peter Schiff is all over YouTube. He does like podcasts and he's always on doing interviews and stuff. He's an American stockbroker. And I've found that his advice is really good. I haven't had much money to play in the market, but the few things that he has said, he's very anti-Bitcoin though, Peter Schiff. Number 90, Mostafa Chamran. Uh, Mostafa was an Iranian physicist, politician, commander, and guerrilla fighter who served as the first defense minister in Iran. Okay, so this guy's a, a, an Iranian guerrilla fighter, and he was like over in the Berkeley Hills, like studying like classical um, um, British literature. Like, hmm, this will be very useful when I'm in Iran fighting the Jews or whoever they're fighting. Uh, number 89 is familiar face, Richard Mole. You may not know the name, but you would know the face. Richard, Charles Richard Mole is an American actor. He played the role of Bull Shannon on as a bailiff on the NBC uh, sitcom Night Court from 1984 to 1992. Uh, he uh, is also the voice of Harvey Dent. So uh, Richard Mole, the bald bailiff, the nice bailiff goofball, uh, from the show Nightcliff. I remember oh, I used to watch that when I was a kid. And uh, Richard Mole, actually a Berkeley graduate. He's probably one of the tallest Berkeley graduates. I wonder I, if he played on the basketball team. Uh, but yeah, he's friendly uh, bailiff. They didn't really get much acting work after that. A lot of these actors, people that you recognize, they were maybe they, they did an, a job, an acting job for six years. He was the night. He was the bailiff on night court. And that's it. You know, yeah, then he lives his life. He probably watches TV and listens to the Mr. G podcast, which is available wherever you listen to podcasts. I don't know where Richard Mole listens to podcasts. Maybe, you know, he listens to the Mr. G podcast on Amazon podcast or on Apple podcast or on Audacity podcast, but somewhere. Ha ha. That's so funny, Mr. G. Ha ha. You plugged your show. That was so clever. No, it wasn't clever, but this. It's just, there's no script. I'm just fucking talking right here. I had no idea what I was going to say, okay? <laughs> Hopefully I come up with a story or something. Number 86, Edith Head. Edith Head was an American costume designer who won a record eight Academy Awards for Best Costume Design from 1949 to 1973. So Edith Head uh, was born in 1897, and she died in 1981 at the age of 84. Uh, so Edith had, you know, she won a record eight Academy Awards for best costume design. So we're mentioning her right now, um, you know, uh, 42 years after she died. And uh, she did all the <laughs> she. What about the costume people that didn't win the Oscar? What about the people that were just nominated? OK, I don't know why. Well, Edith Head, I'm, I'm picturing you. You were born in 1897. So when you were 20, let's assume you were at Berkeley when you were 20, then it was 1917. Wow. You were at Berkeley like in the day, Edith. Like you were, what? but 1917, I, I've known uh, somebody born in 1917. They're not alive anymore. But when, when, when my old friend, Benny Woodrow McGee Sr. was born, when he was a baby, you were a, a little college hopper in the early teens and then you were like dancing at the college parties edith and you're like looking at everybody's costumes because you're like going to be a famous costume designer uh but you're like you know then benny's dad that was born in 1917 uh, you know as a baby at that time that's crazy and who's president woodrow wilson is president in 1917 when edith head is at the University of Berkeley. It's just that's the part of history that's fascinating to me because we're mentioning Edith today, but maybe nobody's going to mention her tomorrow. She won't be the hot topic on podcasts, Edith. I'm sorry. And the next day as well, and probably next week or next month. Hell, we're probably the last person that's ever going to mention Edith again. She might get her name mentioned at some Academy Awards costume design ceremony party, but other than that, Edith, this is your swan song. 
All right. Speaking of songs, next on the list, we got James Song. James Song is a Taiwanese politician. He's the founder of the current chairman of the People's First Party. Okay, so he's a politician in Taiwan. Number 82, Brian Keller is an Australian-born American journalist. Uh, she's a journalist on CNN and MSNBC. Nathan Adrian is an American competitive swimmer, also Berkeley graduate. Tress McNeil is the voice of Dot from the t show uh, Babs Bunny and Tiny Toons. So, all right, Tress, I like your uh, cartoon from the early 90s. Number 79, Scott Adams. <laughs> Scott Raymond Adams is the, a current meme and American author and cartoonist. I used to watch Scott Adams cartoons when I was a kid, but uh, he's the creator of the syndicated comic Dilbert. Uh, he got right canceled recently because uh, his comments on a, on a recent study, uh, but they were, you know, pretty extreme. And uh, he's author of uh, several books as well. Uh, but like I said, he's most known for the comic book Dilbert, uh, which when I was uh, 11, 12 years old, was the uh, one of the top comics. Like, I think it won like comic of the year. It was like the one of the most well-known comics. Now he's on YouTube. And like I said, he's become a meme uh, because of what he said, the controversial uh, things that he said. Uh, next up, Missy Franklin. Missy Franklin is American former competitive uh, swimmer. You'd seen her at the uh, previous Olympics. Uh, Lynn Margallis is an American evolutionary biologist. Barry Nelson, uh, a famous actor and singer known as the first Ian Fleming's James Bond, uh, was Barry Nelson, the first James Bond. Roxanne Dawson is uh, Roxanne Biggs. Dawson is an American actress and director. She's best known as uh, on Star Trek Voyager. Uh, next up, 74, Robert Green. This is the only person that might know I exist on this list, all right? Some of the people on the University of Texas top graduates, I'm pretty sure they know who I am. But Robert Green, I, just because I've commented a lot on his work, he's a famous writer. Uh, he writes books on strategy, power, and seduction. Uh, his most famous bestseller is The 48 Laws of, Laws of Power, uh, The Art of Seduction, and The 33 Strategies of War. Robert Greene also uh, wrote a book with 50 Cent as well, surprisingly. Uh, we'll just do a few more. Jennifer, Jennifer Mulhorn Grandholm is an, uh, a Canadian lawyer, a famous Canadian lawyer that you see on TV a lot. Uh, number 72, Beverly Clearly, the author of the famous Ramona books, which I used to enjoy as a child. Uh, Beverly clearly was an American writer of children's and young adult books. One of her most, one of America's most successful authors over 91 million copies of her books have been sold worldwide. Uh, the Prince Frisco of the Netherlands currently the Prince uh, studied mechanical engineering at Berkeley from 1986 to 1988. So Berkeley also has an international uh, legacy of prestige Whereas the University of Texas, if you're in Texas, hook them horns, that's like the number one school, no doubt, no questions asked, UT Austin. Uh, and in the United States, people understand UT is a very good school as well. Uh, but in more internationally, I've noticed that like princes and sons of royalty, they all are on this list um, more so than the University of Texas. So Berkeley has a worldwide reputation. Uh, next up, we have uh, Bernard Caesar Einstein uh, was a German-American engineer and the son of Albert Einstein, one of three known biological grandchildren of Albert Einstein. Okay. All sons of Hans. He was the only one to survive childhood. So Albert Einstein's only grandson went to Berkeley. All right. Um, Thomas Kincaid, it makes it in at number 68. He was an American painter of uh, popular realistic pastoral and idyllic uh, idyllic subjects he is notable for achieving achieving success during his lifetime with the mass marketing of his work re and reprinted production uh george bernard danzig number 67 is Amer american mathematical scientist uh who studied at berkeley from 1939 to 41 he died at age 91 in the year 2005 uh, famous mathematician. All right, number 66 is a familiar name, Jerry Matthews Mathers, also known as the Beaver from Leave It to Beaver. 
Uh, Gerald Patrick Mathers is an American actor best known for his role on the television sitcom Leave it to Beaver. Originally broadcast from 1957 to 1963, he played the protagonist Theodore Beaver Cleaver. Number 65, Ken Thompson. Kenneth Lane Thompson is an American pioneer of computer science. Thompson worked at Bell Labs for most of his career, where he designed and implemented the original Unix operating system. All right. Uh, Betty Friedan, famous for the women's movement, went to Berkeley. Number 63, Adam Duritz, lead singer of the Counting Crows, went to Berkeley. Um, Adder Frederick Duritz is an American singer best known as the front man of the Counting Crows, which is he's a founding member and principal composer. All right, Tom Anderson from MySpace with the white T-shirt. Thomas Anderson is an American technolo technology... <laughs> I can't say techno technology entrepreneur, technology entrepreneur and co-founder of the social networking site MySpace, which he founded in 2003 with Chris DeWolf. He was later president of MySpace. Uh, yeah, Tom Anderson, congratulations. You went to Berkeley. Number 61, Wyatt Cooper. Wyatt Cooper was an American author, screenwriter, and actor. He was the fourth husband of Vanderbilt family heiress, and socialite Gloria Vanderbilt. He's also the father of CNN anchor Anderson Cooper. That's his father, Wyatt Cooper. So I don't see Anderson Cooper on this list. Did he not attend Berkeley? All right, number 59, Tao Ruspoli. I don't know who this is. He's an Italian-American. Don Tal de Ruspoli. I think he's an artist. His face is painted in the picture. Number 58, Jerome Adams. People might remember Jerome Adams. Um, as the Surgeon General during COVID. Uh, Jerome Michael Adams is an American an anesthesiologist and a former Vice Admiral in the U.S. Public Health Service. Uh, number 57, Kathy Baker is an American actress. Baker began her career in theater and made her debut in the 1983 film The Right Stuff. I believe that had Tom Cruise in it, really great movie. Number 56, Earl Warren, we mentioned him. Uh, he was an American attorney politician, and he served as the 14th Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court from 1953 to 1969. Uh, when he presided over the Supreme Court, it was known as the Warren Court. Uh, we'll just do a few more. We'll stop on somebody good. Uh, number 53, Jimmy Doolittle uh, was an American military general and aviation pioneer who received the Medal of Honor for his raid on Japan during World War II. Uh, so Jimmy Doolittle, um, as well as many other uh, Admiral Nimitz, I believe, uh, also were in the Berkeley ROTC program because, uh, as we learned yesterday, um, they have one of the country's top ROTC programs. And it was actually mandatory uh, during the uh, first 50 years of Berkeley um, from its inception in the uh, early 1900s. And they made it compulsory uh, during the uh, 60s and optional or excuse me optional during the 60s and uh, they eliminated the program uh, during uh, altogether uh, by the end of the 60s due to uh, student unrest and student protest uh, brett dalton is an american actor he's best known for grant ward on hive and agents of shield okay so a small time actor uh, mona simpson in 1979, graduated with a Bachelor's of Arts in Creative Writing. Mona Simpson is an American novelist. She has written six novels and studied English at Berkeley as well. So Mona Simpson, a writer. Uh, William Young Lee is an American uh, martial actor and martial artist. Uh, he was in supernatural drama Witchblade, as well as the sci-fi series Bionic Woman. Greg Gutfield from Fox News, familiar face, uh, very snarky guy. You know, kind of a, a jerk, but pretty smart and apparently very smart. He went and graduated from Berkeley. Uh, and his name is Gregory as well. Gregory John Gutfield is an American television host, libertarian political commentator, comedian, and author. He is the host of the late night comedy talk show Gutfield and hosts a Saturday night, a Saturday night edition of his show as well. So everybody knows Greg Gutwill from The Five, I think it's called on Fox News. Uh, it's one of the most popular uh, cable news shows, The Five. Okay, we're not going to stop on him, though. Susan Sontag. Susan Sontag was an American writer, philosopher, and political activist. 
She mostly wrote essays, but her published novels and her first major work, Notes on Camp, as well. Uh, Joan Didion. Joan Didion was an American writer. She is considered one of the pioneers of new journalism, along with uh, Gay Talis, Hunter S. Thompson, and Tom Wolfe. Um, if you weren't aware, uh, the title of my book, Gonzo Education, uh, comes from uh, Hunter S. Thompson's coining the term Gonzo Journalism. Uh, but J uh, Joan Didion, I believe, also was a uh, girlfriend to one of them. Tom Wolfe, of course, wrote uh, The Electric Kool-Aid Acid Tests, all about Ken Casey and his experiences with LSD uh, driving across the country and, uh, you know, experimenting with it. Um, go on. Okay, Susan Sontag mentioned that writer. Uh, here we got Hong Kong Crown, Prince of Norway. So like I said, a lot of uh, princes from uh, Europe, they uh, come and they study at the University of Berkeley, California, because it has that good of a reputation. Uh, another uh, graduate, number 33, Octavio Paz. Uh, number 32, Bill Bixby. Wil Wilford Bailey Bill Bixby was an American actor, director, and producer, and frequent game show panelist. Uh, Bixby's career spanned more than three decades. I'm sorry, I don't. it doesn't really say much. Bill Bixby, I guess he was big in his time. Uh, he died in 93 at the age of 59. Uh, here is somebody now that would know uh, my, Michiko Kaku, which you see all the time. I didn't know he was 76, though. Uh, he's an American theoretical physicist, futurist, and popularized of science. Uh, he's all over YouTube. Uh, he's been on uh, Joe Rogan. He's been on uh, lots of different podcasts. And he's great to listen to, especially if you like listening to uh, things about astronomy and the stars and what's going on in the future. He's he's totally intelligent and uh and it's no surprise that he went to the top public university in the United States, which is the University of California, Berkeley. And I say that wearing a Texas hat and having graduated with a bachelor's degree in, from the University of Texas. If you want to know more about me and my own education, you can learn more in my first book, Gonzo Education. It's one of the highest re reviewed books on Amazon. And... Um, Thank you all for listening. The Mr. G podcast is available wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, you might have to Google a little bit. Mr. G Hawaii podcast, Gregory Brandt podcast. And if you can't find it, uh, full episodes are uploaded in their entirety on Twitter and YouTube. Thank you guys for listening today. Tomorrow, we're going to talk all about USC, the big rival between UCLA and Berkeley as well. And uh, everybody have a great day. Uh, where it's a miracle that we all exist. We're at the boondocks of the Milky Way, slanging around a star, going a million miles per hour. You know, there was a trillion different sperm that could have made it to your mom's egg. And the combination created you. The combination created me. And what did I create? I created this podcast today, episode 36. From me and my street cats, we say aloha.